Hey -o, everybody, Haku here with my top 10 favorite Tower of God characters. Now, I actually recorded numbers 25 through 11 in a second video that's already up on the channel if you want to check that out first, but here we're going to go through my top 10 favorites. And I'm really, really excited to share some of these with you. I haven't done a video like this on my favorite characters in four years, since 2016. So my opinions have changed so incredibly much. There are new characters who weren't even really around um, four years ago who are now on this list. So that's really cool. But uh, yeah, things have changed so, so much. My top ten here probably doesn't look a whole lot like my top ten from four years ago. Um... But be warned, there are going to be maybe spoilers if you haven't read the whole series so far up until this point. Um, I'm doing this during the hiatus, during uh, the sort of nest arc. Uh, if you're watching this like months down the line or something, just to give you some context for where I am. But uh, yeah, let's dive into these top ten. Number 10 is Yo Mi Seng, probably the weirdest addition to my top 10, or at least most unexpected addition to my top 10. I don't think a lot of people predict Mi Seng to be in somebody's top 10, but she deserves that spot. Like, hear me out, I have really good reason for this. At first, I probably, like most of you, was just like, Mi Seng's kind of a okay whatever character. She's just Mi Seng. But then, Going back and rereading recently, as I'm watching like other people's read-throughs and stuff, I'm starting to realize Misang is actually a really awesome character. Now, I personally came to really love her during like Last Station and stuff. I thought she really shined there, but even before then, I never really noticed it reading before, but every time something bad happens, when other characters are just like, eh, we should do whatever, we should do this, we should just keep climbing as we are, Misang goes off and trains and gets stronger every time, or she at least tries. When Viol and Horyang left the team, she trained when everybody else wanted to stop. She wanted to keep training even more. Um, later on, she wants to train in a improve over the time skip to get even stronger because of things that have happened. Then, even later on, when we lose, spoiler alert, mega spoiler alert, Prince and Akraptor, she goes and wants to train even more with Andrasi. She's always improving herself, always changing. We're always seeing her pull out these new moves or abilities with her observer. And then finally, it all comes to this really cool pinnacle where... When we're at last station, and there's this battlefield full of rankers, the only allies that join bomb on this battlefield of rankers are Andrasi and Misang. And Misang specifically says, I can do this. She takes down the Purple Eye Brothers or whatever they were, and says, I've proven myself. I can do this. I've been training. I've been getting stronger. Let me stand with you on this battlefield. And it's so good. I genuinely love Misang's character after Last Station, and I'm so excited to see more of Team Sweet and Sour again. That's one of the things I want to see most uh, coming up in Season 3. I want to know what's happening with Wang Nin's group with Misang. So yeah, she's top 10, and I feel like I have really good justification for loving her character this much now. Number nine to me is Sachi Faker, and I didn't know that this was a weird choice until recently. I thought everybody liked Sachi, but no, apparently I am maybe in a minority. Uh, most of the reason that I love his design, or that I love his character, is I love his design. It's amazing. It's like the best design in Tower of God to me. But in addition to his design, I just think he had sort of a cool role when it came to Hell Train. Now, he didn't get a lot of fights. He didn't really get any 1v1 fights that I can remember. He kind of got he kind of got the Andrasi role, but he was still cool. He was still fun. I liked his character when it came to his personality and the way he interacted with other characters. That's what I liked about his character. It wasn't about powers. It wasn't about fights or anything. It was about his personality and how he interacted with others. That's what I really, really liked, um, even more than just his appearance. But when it came to powers, we know that there is some hype surrounding him, and I hope we get to see him show that off. Um, we know that he was supposed to be in the top three 
uh, D-rank regulars along with Kaiser and with Liliel and Chiliel because apparently they just count as one unit. Um, and we also know that when asked about it, or like in his blog post, CU said that Bomb's two best allies combat-wise were Andrasi and Sachi. And I remember when I read that in the blog post, I was like, Sachi? That is the weirdest addition. I mean, I guess he is in the top three, but it's so weird to think about, like, with Kunakuro Agnes existing, with Rack Wraith Razor existing, Bomb's two best allies in terms of combat are Andrasi and Sachi which is really interesting to me. So, uh, yeah, I love Sachi's character, and I didn't know it was a weird choice to love his character until recently when I learned that a lot of people don't like Sachi that much. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, number nine for sure. In eighth place is our main character, Juvial Grace, or 25th Bomb, but I, I, prefer, I prefer Juvial Grace as his name, actually, uh, because I sort of just theorized that that's his actual real name. But uh, getting his design out of the way, I love his design, the different looks he goes through. He has some looks that aren't as good as others, but some that are really cool. Um, but his character, going through the series, in Season 1, it's great how he's kind of a blank slate. He's got a little bit of personality, but generally he's just some person who's been stuck in a cave and the only person he knows of even is Rachel. And the only things he knows are what Rachel's taught him. And it's cool to see him learning and growing the way he is. And then we have this cool badass emo juvial grace in Return of the Prince and going into workshop battle, which has such good development for him and it's so cool. In Hell Train, a lot of Helltrain, I felt like he was less interesting because he just didn't talk as much. And when he did talk, it was all just sort of these cheesy one-liners about, I need to get stronger, I need to defeat this person, I need to do this. But even among that, even though that was a lot of Helltrain, Helltrain still had some amazing character moments. One of my favorite character moments for Bomb is when he talks to Kuhn during Name Hunt Station about how he feels about being a slayer and all that, and how he feels about people relying on him, people wanting him to be a god and all that. And I thought that was so good. And then it continues on with his relationship with Hockney and his backstory and uh, in um, Floor of Death and his evolving relationship with Rachel. His relationship with Rachel throughout the series is so, so good. The way it changes and ebbs and flows in all these different ways, it's so good. Um, there are so many good moments in the series between Bomb and Rachel when it comes to just being so interesting in how they interact with each other. I love it so much. Um, but also, then we get Hidden Floor. Hidden Floor Bomb is one of the best versions of Bomb. His development there, within himself, is so cool. It's so good. And then, in Season 3, I think we get an improvement over Helltrain, where Bomb shows a lot more personality. He talks a lot more smack. He talks a lot more in general, which I think is a big improvement. I think him talking more has improved a lot of the problems that Helltrain had, where he was just silent so much, and when he did talk, it was just cheesy shonen stuff. Um, I think Season 3 has improved upon that aspect of his character a lot. Plus, I love his design in Season 3. I think even more than the long hair... His Season 3 design has grown on me so much that it might be my favorite bomb design. Uh, so yeah, main character, love him, number 8. Uh, not, not the best. I'm usually not much of a main character guy. Usually main characters don't even make close to the top for me. So the fact that he's top 10 is really impressive actually, because I'm not really a main character type of guy. So yeah, love bomb, number 8. Number seven is the king of the dogs, Baylord Yama. Now, I absolutely love Yama, even though he's not been in the story that much. He's an FUG slayer, and I freaking love the slayers. But beyond that, his character is so not what I expected. It is so good. I was so surprised to just get the development of him putting out this tough, rough, violent exterior. But on the inside, he's just trying to protect the canine people, these people that he cares about, and everything he's been doing from defeating his brother, from um, having his other brother be exiled, uh, 
the way he acts, everything is to protect the canine people. He really devotes himself to them, which leads to some cool moments where, like the one where Jordan destroys the bomb and he's like, or the bomb, and he's like, um, you know, if you treat these dogs well, they'll be loyal forever. It's so good. And I love that his story had this arc of doing everything to protect the canine people, doing everything to protect the canine people, and then Yusracha just slaughters a chunk of them, takes a chunk of them with him, kills one of his closest men, and all of that that he's worked to protect for so long falls apart, which leads him to now need to be the one to go and defeat Yisracha. It's so good. I love it so much. I love his character, his role in the story. It's great. I'm looking forward to see his character interact with Bomb more and how their sort of relationship will develop further, but I like what we have so far already. So yeah, I also love his rival ability, the ability where, at least I think that's what this ability was called, where people who are afraid of him, their attacks don't really hurt him. I love that, and how this sort of mean, violent exterior that he puts out there helps with that, his personality helps with that power, because people are so afraid of him, that then their attacks don't work on him. I love it, it's brilliant. Uh, so yeah, I absolutely love Yama, so... Even though he's kind of newish, top 10 already, sitting at number 7. In 6th place is another relatively new character, Lobovia Elaine. Now Elaine isn't just a character that I like, she seems to be a fan favorite already. So many people love her already, and so many people share the same opinion as me of... Now that she's joined Bomb's team, she really needs to do more. I want to see more of her. It's not enough just that she was with Bomb during that 3 year time skip. I want to see more of her doing things, because her backstory was amazing. Her backstory is one of my favorites in the entire series, and her fight with Viol is one of my favorites in the entire series. That fight was so good. Name Hunt Station was an arc that's one of the best in the entire series, and she is a carrying force in that arc. She is one of the best characters that we get introduced to there, even though there's a lot of other amazing stuff going on in Name Hunt Station too, like, Name Hunt Station has a lot going on. But, yeah, I love Elaine, I love that she joined the team, that was something that I was really, really hoping for. Now what I'm really hoping for is that we get to see her doing more things. Also, her power is awesome, I love her power. So yeah, especially we're attacking the Lopovia headquarters, we're attacking the Nest. Give us some more Elaine. Let us have more Elaine. But, uh, yeah. Number six, time to get into the top five. Honestly, there's not even much to say about number five being Warion. Warion has been one of the best characters in the series from the very beginning. Like, her design is one of the best. She's always cool. She, like, never stops being cool, even when she gets kidnapped, like, all the time, and she never stops being mysterious, no matter how much she's, like, getting a ton of screen time. So, yeah, Huarion, best. Like, I, I can't say best girl, because Elbeld is there, who is top waifu, but, gosh, what a good character. I freaking love Huarion. Number four is another relatively new character in David Hockney. Now, Hockney, my sweet baby boy, his design is incredible. I love the comedic bits with him in Hidden Floor. Going back through Hidden Floor, he had a lot of personality there, and it was really, really cool and funny. He kind of does as well in uh, Floor of Death, but the main reason he's so high up, the main reason that he is in fourth for me is his relationship with Viol. The friendship that they formed in early Floor of Death was just written really well. So many of Bomb's allies don't have a friendship with them or a relationship with them at all that's written very much. They're just sort of climbing the tower with them. But Hockney really actually got to develop a relationship with the main character that's really cool. And I like that he's one of the only people, he and Elaine, that stuck with Bomb over this three-year time skip. I really, really just love Hockney's relationship with Bomb, and that carries him to this number four spot. Not only his design or his abilities or anything like that, because he's been cool in season three as well. He saved Evan Kell's life. Gosh, I love Hockney. Hockney deserves this number four spot. And he's another character that I think very much like Elaine, has become a fan favorite really quickly. 
But uh, yeah, top four, David Hockney. Number three is Rack Wraith Razor, one of my favorite characters who's, again, been one of my favorite characters from, like, the beginning. I honestly feel like he's delivered some of the series' greatest moments. That hug with Viol when they're reunited, the a game with... Or a game without me isn't a or is a game not worth playing, um, or there's a bunch of different translations of that scene. But you know what I mean. He delivers some of the series' greatest moments. He's so cool. He has such good relationships with other characters. I love whenever he and you are together. They're hilarious together. Um, his stuff with Bomb is always really good. He's my favorite of the Bomb Kun Rack trio, even though I love all three of them. Uh, he's the one we get to see less or the least often, though. Um, I also like his new abilities. I like that we've gotten a little bit of hints into the ancient stuff. So who knows? A lot of people are theorizing he could have to collect all the elements like some sort of Tower of God avatar. I kind of don't want that, but I'm okay if that happens. But yeah, I, I like him, and I like these powers, too. Because one thing with Rack is that for a while there, he was catching L's left and right. He was just constantly getting destroyed every time he tried to fight somebody. He didn't get these cool moments. But then ever since he started uh, getting his powers um, in, uh, in Hidden Floor, we got to see him demolish Levy. We got to see him have a lot of really, really cool moments in Season 3 so far. So, yeah, I like that we're finally getting to see him actually live up to being this strong, dominating type of fighter. So, yeah, I'm really liking uh, Rack more now that he's not taking L's left and right like he was for a little while there. But, uh, yeah, I love the character and always have. He was number two, I think, last time I made this video four years ago. So his position really hasn't changed all that much. But, uh, yeah, time to get into my top two, which honestly are kind of interchangeable. I've been sort of fighting back and forth on which one should be number one and which one should be number two, and I've even changed my mind just recently, so, uh, here goes nothing. Number two is the submerged fish, Yu Han Sung. So, Yu Han Sung has been, again, one of my favorites since season one. I've always loved his character, but... We got to finally see more of him starting in Hidden Floor. I loved the Hidden Floor version of him and how he was always just so confused at why everybody hates him so much. He's like, why does Bam and Andrasi hate me? And then he meets up with like Kun Rack and the rest and he's like, why do they hate me? I love it. It's so, so, so good. Um, but besides all of that, I like his role as sort of Bomb's other mentor besides um, Ha Jin Sung when it came to Ha Jin Sung teaching him martial arts, but Yuan Sung sort of doing more of the Shinsu control. I love Yuan Sung's character in that he's a character that I like. I like characters that get by on smarts and skills because they don't have power, and that's something where it's sort of key to Yuan Sung's character. And why he comes up with a lot of these techniques that he teaches to Bomb is because he doesn't have a lot of innate power, so he becomes one of the most renowned and powerful wave controllers out here because of his skills, because of his genius abilities. I love that. I love that so, so much. And the way he's so great at all of his planning and scheming and all of that is really great, too. Just in general, he's constantly been great. Also, we're getting more and more of his flashbacks with Evan Kell. Those are all good. So I hope we get to see more of him. I hope he gets to win one of these 1v1 fights whenever we get back from the hiatus. Uh, I just I just want more good things for Yuan Sung. So lastly, let's get into my favorite character. Again, a character that between them and Yuan Sung, I've kind of been juggling back and forth. And until recently, I actually had Yuan Sung in first, but I changed my mind last minute. So here we go. My number one favorite character in all of Tower of God is Arie Joaquin, or White. I kind of count them as the same since Joaquin is White's sort of primary main personality. Um, so, I love everything about his character. He's this evil, arrogant character at first, and he still kind of is, but he's this super evil, arrogant character, 
and I love the journey we take from that. We start off with him being rivals to Baum, and slowly over time, he sees Baum succeeding and protecting people, and he sees Rachel doing all these selfish things, and he starts to think, and I love that it's a slow build over time, man, the way, thing, the way she does things is so selfish, and this coming from him. And he starts to see himself agreeing with Baum a little bit more and a little bit more, until finally he ends up going from his enemy, his rival, to being an ally to him. Not like a close, friendly ally, but he's willing to work on the same side, which is really cool. Um, in addition to that, I love the way, again, Albel does just being his Jiminy Cricket, the voice in his head, his conscience. Um, but in Season 3, he even goes further. I love the stuff with him and Hatsu, but he even goes further into becoming this sort of like... How do I even describe it? A Hisoka-like character, where it's not that he particularly likes Bom, but he's going to develop him. He's going to let him get stronger, and then he's going to eat his soul. Which, to be honest, if he can see how strong he's getting like this quickly, it's pretty arrogant of him to be like, oh yeah, if this guy gets stronger, I'm totally going to be able to eat a soul. Like, no. Um, but there's a lot I want to see from him. I want to see him either pass R.E.A. Hone's 100th floor test or defeat R.E.A. Hone, of course, because he's a slayer. Um, I'd love to see that. There have been so many really great moments uh, with White just being badass. And one of the best is his fight with Kalavan. is so good. One of my favorite fights in the series, just when it comes to being big and, I mean, I ain't using the word, but epic, being cool. I love the cool factor in it. So, uh, yeah, I love his character. And lest we not forget, he has this cool backstory of wanting to take out Arie Hon, and he is basically five kids in a trench coat. I love this. He's basically five kids in a trench coat standing on each other's shoulders. Um, we can't forget that Joaquin, when we see him separated from the rest, he's actually like a literal child who became a god, who made these countries war with each other. He's such a cool character. There's so much lore in there. And especially, not only the Arie Hone stuff, I think Arie Hagaferion was the princess who defeated him. I want to see her show up in the story. I want to see how he interacts with her. So, yeah, number one, there's still a ton more that I want to see with this character. And that is it. Because he's number one, I'm going to leave him up here while I finish out the video. Uh, so... Yeah, like if you did like the video, comment down there. Tell me what who your favorite characters are, what you thought of my favorite characters. Subscribe for more Tower of God, much much more on the channel. Follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel or talk to you there. If you'd like a link to our Discord server to talk to me or more of us there, just ask and I can give you a link. And if you want to help support the channel so I can continue making more videos like this and many, many others, um, it's patreon.com slash haku of the tubes, or a link will be in the description. But either way, thank you so much for watching again, and I'll see you all next time.